All right, so I have been tasked to bring out three of uh, the most interesting and hilarious and insane people that will speak here all day. Um, my friends, uh, Kurt Schlichter, Steven Kruiser, and Tony Katz are gonna come out here in a second. I'll introduce each of them one at a time. Um, but again, thank you for being here today. It's good to see everyone. Um, and, and make sure that if you do use Twitter, if you do have your phone here today, the hashtag is UniteIECC. And we encourage you, if you use Twitter, to be live tweeting this and letting folks know all of the uh, entertaining things that these guys in particular have to say. So first up is my friend Kurt Schlichter. He is a trial lawyer. Uh, here's Kurt. Let's give him a good hand here. <laughs> Kurt. Kurt is a lawyer and contributor at Town Hall, and uh, he's served in the U.S. Army and has risen to the rank of colonel. Next, we have a stand-up comedian and political activist by the name of Steven Cruiser. Steven Cruiser, come on out. <laughs> Last and certainly not least, Tony Katz. He's a radio show host. He's here to uh, kind of corral these two on stage. Tony. All right, so we're going to hand the floor over to these guys. Enjoy. Do we, do we need these? These are very important. I think you do need That they're behind the chairs. That is fantastic. Oh, we, got, see, we came out to hand it to you, and you didn't give her a chance. Thank is that, you is very that much. Happens? Thanks for being you? polite. Thank I appreciate you, your courtesy. Fan give her a Thank hand. You. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. Big hand for RJ. Big hand for everyone you've seen so far today. Uh, how many people saw Godzilla? That has nothing to do with this. I was just curious. Wanted to know if I needed to go tonight. Are you guys okay? <laughs> my name's Steven Cruiser. This is my friend Kurt Schlichter. Um, it, Tony Katz. Well, this is called Tracked and Targeted, and this is its premiere, okay? So you are our guinea pigs. We're not... Wait, here's basically what it is. We could make a lot of stuff up, but I'll tell you. One day, we were all on the NRA news show because we like guns, and they like having us on. So we're on the NRA news show one day. And because we're decent conservative Americans, we decided to go day drinking, like you do. So we go, we hit a bar, we start drinking, and then we tweet a couple of pictures of it, and all of online social conservative media goes kind of crazy, and we thought, you know what? I bet people just want to see us hang out together. And we figured, since we don't like people to know where we live or where we hang out, we would bring it to the people. So this is what we're doing right now. This is our first time coming to you talking about politics. We're going to do a little bit of intro about ourselves first. We're going to do a little thing in the middle called, what if we were your three-headed president where we will solve policy issues that you yell out from the audience? Um, and then we're going to do a little Q&A at the end, and it doesn't always be politics. If you want to know, you know, what Tony sleeps in, I've got pictures. Uh, whatever. We're going to push the boundaries a little bit. We don't know. We hope that everybody's kind of okay with a little looser thing. Um, if we get kicked out of Riverside on our first gig, we look at that as a badge of honor, okay? Um, but we brought our lawyer and our colonel with us, so what are you gonna do, send us to jail? Now that, now that much is true, that much is true. Kurt Schlichter is a lawyer and he is a colonel in the National Guard. Which and it's basically... great to be loved for being a lawyer. It's so nice, I, th yes. I appreciate it. Uh, and it basically means that when we have a lawyer and a colonel, your women are ours. So, yeah. Basically, we, what it means. Hello, Riverside. We have come for your women, and we are going to enjoy it very much. And. There's a balcony? Is there anybody? Is, there a, is that a balcony, or am I hallucinating? Wow. Is there an assassin up there? Because if I got shot on this first one, that would really be awesome for the PR, too. <laughs> Just graze me, though, through and through. So we're going to introduce ourselves a little bit first. RJ gave you a, br a brief intro. My name is Steven Cruiser. I am a professional stand-up comic my entire life. I dropped out of college to go on the road. Um, I was going to become a doctor, and then I left to become a comic, and my mother's so proud of me. Um, she's, still, she's still like, oh, Steven's dead, when people ask about me at family things. And I've been politically involved my entire life, too, but I kept them apart, because I don't know if you guys knew this, but being a conservative and being in Hollywood, not always the best mix. But, so I, but in the last few years, I figured, what the heck? Roll the dice. I'm getting old. My prostate's the size of one of those workout balls now. I don't give a damn anymore. 
So you guys can over here come with us too, okay? These guys are good. You guys are kind of like, we're the Presbyterians. We don't know. <laughs> they put us on a bus. There was Melba Toast, and we're here now, and we're not quite sure. <laughs> it's okay. It's... What's that? Are you going to get, or do we have the militant band of rolling violent Presbyterians? We got the Presbyterian biker gang here firing up the Vespas. You get us pissed off, we'll get on our segways and really come after you. Yeah, we dare you to heckle. We really, really do. So, um, I have been a conservative my entire life, too. I never had a wandering liberal phase when I was younger. Uh, college Republicans, first, first campaign I ever worked on, Reagan was on the ballot. That's how long I've been around. Um, he yeah. voted for Mondale. <laughs> it's like, I think he voted for Taft. <laughs> I, voted, I voted for Taft, and then I got his belly. No, I mean um, the first one. Yeah, my very first one. But uh, I grew up in Barry Goldwater's Arizona. When I was a kid, there, uh, it was illegal to have Democrats in Arizona. Um, <laughs> You couldn't have them in your house or anything. I remember my mother would take me to the zoo and she'd go, honey, that's a liberal. And don't feed him or he'll try to take all your money. <laughs> so I've been doing, so we're doing this and what we want to do now is, it's been a weird several years. The ups, the downs, the fighting, the this, the that. We want to have fun and do politics at the same time. We're all hip deep in politics all day, every day. We all write about it. Tony talks about it. But we want to have fun. So we're going to have fun. And if that means everybody gets naked and jumps into a tub of butter with the Presbyterian biker gang, that's what it means, okay? And until you've been naked in a tub of butter with a Presbyterian biker gang, you have not lived. Nothing what you expected, was it, darling? No. She said, I'm going to be a VIP guest, and this one frightens me. He, he moves a lot. And just, do they come out in, they're in their area, right? They, so that's what we want to do. We're going to talk about a few things. We're going to talk about some policy issues back and forth. Each of us has a little something personal we want to deal with today. Mine is, my big thing lately, I have decided to stop getting caught up in the outrage du jour, you know, as it's easy to do. There are so many things to get mad at or fired up about at in the news cycle every day in politics that, you know, it's, it's easy to get really pissed off at 20 things before lunch every day. My thing right now, the thing that I think is a real danger to the republic is this assault on free speech and free thought that's very systematic, very creepy, and is erratic is a cancer eating away at the fabric of the, of the republic right now. It's this thing where they're prescribing which speech, that it, and it's not just a little thing where there are going to be some general societal rules. They're actually labeling things legally hate speech now. There's a city somewhere in California that's trying to make verbal bullying a misdemeanor. I mean, it's just, and it's just going to get creepier and creepier all the time. And this is something that I think we need to, oh, we're also going to be hashtagging things. To, for those of you that don't do Twitter, we're just going to do old school Twitter and write it on a piece of paper. Because, you know, the first lady. <laughs> the first lady, you know, we're just, we're trying to show you, it's, it's, you know, we're reaching out across the aisle. Um, Be a sea here, of them. here come the hashtag. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, what? You're just pacing like a caged tiger. This is what I do. And you guys want me to sit on a chair while you're talking. Hey, whatever. Hashtag, <laughs> I want what he's drinking. We are in this... My daughter is a teenager and... Uh, I tried to raise her to be a Republican lesbian, but that didn't work. Um, so I didn't, I didn't want any teenage boys around the house. Uh, they come over, they find me cleaning a shotgun and talking about how the Parkinson's gets to my trigger finger every so often. <laughs> but she's a teenager now, and she's been reading all the... They, they make them read all these dystopian fantasies and, every, and, and novels in and, and 1984, all of that. And, she, and I said... I said, what are you doing? They well, we're reading a whole series of dystopian novels. And I said, why? You're living in one right now. You don't need to read about it. 
And I explained to her why. There are people who are trying to conform your thought. People are trying to make, say, you can think about this, and if you don't think about this, you will be shunned. You will, your life's work will be ruined. We will destroy your life unless you believe this, 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 and this. Usually it's a this, 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 and this that represents a margin of society in America, the fringe of society. It's not mainstream thinking they're trying to bring you around to. It's four freaking whack jobs covered in chicken feathers out here saying, we're going to make you think like us or we're going to ruin your lives. That can't stand anymore. All of our political decisions from now on have to be informed by who we think has the best shot at fighting the people who are trying to make us like this. We cannot have people who roll over. A lot of the infighting on the right right now has to do with, well, you know, we'll just be quiet for another day and we'll do that and we'll do it and we'll fight and fight and fight and fight. I'm 53. They've been going to fight another day since I was really young, okay? It's not, we need to fight these people right now. We need politicians elected who will fight them right now. We don't have a lot of time left before this slippery slope gets really slippery. This, we need to, you know, if you get offended by something, be offended by it, fine. Say, I'm offended, then move on with your life. I get offended, I move on. I'm not gonna sit there and say, okay, I find you a reprehensible human being because you just offended me and now I'm gonna destroy you. No, we can't do that anymore. We can't, nobody should do that. And we have people on our side doing the same thing now, too. That cannot stand. People need to look at every policy issue now and say, you know, if, if it's a fiscal thing that's affecting you, fine, it's affecting you. But look and see where the speech police are working in the background. Figure out how to fight the speech. It's not an easy thing to do, but I've decided it's the most important thing to do right now. I can't leave some world to my kid where somebody who has worked their entire life to get to the top of a corporate structure gets that taken apart in two days because of a $100 political contribution from eight years ago. Hashtag, I didn't go to war to let you liberal punks shut me up. Thank you! How much time do we have left? <laughs> I'm ready whenever you are. Tony gets a sentence, I just kind of stand and sit back down. <laughs> That's my thing! Free speech! I'm a comic. I, my entire livelihood has been dependent upon the freedom of expression in my life. I'm not going to let them take that away from me. I don't care. I brought my colonel with me. We'll deal with it however we need to. I got some pissed off Presbyterian biker Vespa people in back now. We are ready to roll. Free speech! Screw them! You can't have it! Yeah! So, Tony Katz, ladies and gentlemen. Steven Cruiser, everybody. So Steven has been working on expressing himself. It's coming along nicely. The medication works really, really well. Uh, it, it, it's incredible. And when we put this together, we had this conversation. This conversation attracted targeted. Now, I should tell you I'm a radio talk show host. Of all places, I'm in Indiana, out of Indianapolis, but I live in Los Angeles, which basically means I'm being hunted every second of the day. It's, it's hard for them to believe, to understand, to comprehend that there are actually conservatives in Los Angeles, or libertarians, or Tea Partiers, or Republicans, or moderates, or non-hardcore hardcore leftist progressives, or anybody who actually didn't vote for the current administration and everybody in it, or people who aren't going to vote for Sandra Fluck. They're totally, it's beyond them. Every single stretch of the way. But it's, it's a great place to do radio, to, to hear the heartland and what's going on there. And this conversation of tracked and targeted, he talks about free speech. It is one of the things that is being targeted. It is actually a case of being targeted. That's where we're at. We are being tracked and we are being targeted. And when you take a look at the NSA, clearly we're being tracked and we're being targeted. That conversation is not a conversation of crazy people. That's one of the things that makes the three of us sick. That how dare you talk about the IRS attacking uh, the Tea Party groups, the conservative groups. No, no, no. They attacked all Americans. As if somehow that makes it better. Don't talk about Benghazi because Chuck Todd told us that all the questions have been answered. <laughs> Regarding Benghazi, that may be true, but I'm getting new emails every single day that show how much you covered up how these four men died. <laughs> A 
And every single day, we're getting tracked and we're getting targeted and we're getting attacked for who we are, for what we believe, but most importantly, for not believing like they do. We get called bigots and we get called racists and we get called homophobes. We get called every name in the book. We get called anti-Semites. I'm Jewish. <laughs> And I'm not one of these guys who just think they're Jewish because they eat a pastrami sandwich. Actual I'm actually Jew. actual Jew. Hashtag actual Jew. Write that down, folks. <laughs> am I, I'm not the only one, am I? Am I the only Jew in this room? By the way, you should see a Jewish biker gang. It is insane. They're all out there on their Schwinn's. It is, it is something else, all riding to the accountant's office that they own. I mean, every stereotype I got, I'm throwing at you. Good Lord. Being tracked, being targeted has an effect on the soul and the psyche. It's debilitating. And that they know. They knew it before we did, and that's why we are so susceptible to it. We are people. And this is true of the main of America, as Stephen was talking about, who believe in the concepts of facts, logic, and reason, who believe in the idea that if you want to make an argument, you just go out there and make it. That the response to an argument has to be something else that engages facts, logic, and reason. And what we get now is, you just hate black people, you just hate women, you just hate gays, you just hate, you just hate, you just hate, et cetera, et cetera. There are entire networks dedicated to this proposition. So we said to ourselves as we were having a conversation amongst ourselves, as we often do, sometimes over a drink, very often over a cigar. I mean, I'm a, I'm a real smoker. Can I, can I light up on stage? Fight power. Is this, is, is it a, I don't know if it's allowed or not. I, I got to find out. It, can you imagine? There's a rule about lighting a cigar on stage. It's, it's theater, ladies and gentlemen. You should be able to do it. You should be able to light us. If, 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 if four people can engage in sex on stage and they consider it an art performance, clearly one fat guy with a cigar is not going to kill anybody. <laughs> except, except maybe the fat guy, but that's his problem. We're being tracked, we're being targeted, we're being attacked morning, noon, and night. And so what we said to ourselves is, the good colonel, Steven Cruiser, myself, just because they track and target us does not mean we can't track and target them. <laughs> Who are they? Who are they to decide the rules and then to decide the rules for me? They decide the rules for us all the time when they try and tell us about free speech, how we're not allowed to talk and we're not allowed to say certain things, engage in certain words, engage in certain conversations. The entire purpose of political correctness is to keep you from having a conversation. That's why it exists. If it didn't exist for that reason, everybody would know that it's the craziest crap ever to come out of somebody's mouth. We would point, we would laugh, and then we would go for lunch. So we come to you today to have a conversation about how to track and target. If you want to play nice, if you want to play kind, if you want to be loving, if you want to be the sweetest guy in the room, I say congratulations to you, but this ain't the place to be. Uh. This is the place for winners. This is the place where you learn how to win elections. This is the place where you learn how to win culture. This is the place where you learn how to win hearts and minds. And let them figure out how to talk to us. We're right, they're wrong. That's yeah. Kurt Schlichter. That's actual Jew applause. Oh, and good Shabbos. Kurt Schlichter, ladies and gentlemen. There he is, look at him. When summation, ladies and gentlemen, the jury, please give my client some money. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have a flashback. I'm a lawyer. Where's my parade? Now, but before I talk, yeah, look, first of all, applause for Stephen and Tony. Okay. 
They've outlined the problem. I'm here to outline a little bit of the solution, but before I do, I need to talk to this beautiful lady. Ma'am, what is your name? Didi. Didi, oh, you are dressed like a flag. Please do not stand up. I will have to salute. Okay, and, and I, here's some advice. When there's a disaster, do not go out on the town because people will try and fly you at half staff. I love that. She's so psyched. Fourth of July is coming. Yeah, that's when Didi shines. I love that. That is so great. It's so great to be with patriotic people here. Um, this is a patriotic town. You know that armory, National Guard armory down, down the street? Right? Remember when those fires happened seven years ago in uh, 2007? Okay. My boys were in that armory. We deployed down to northern San Diego County. Our young troopers. Your young troopers. I hear a lot of talk about how the younger generation doesn't measure up, how they're weak and entitled. I don't know that because I've had the honor of serving with them in war. Okay? Let me report a little something to you about our young men and women in uniform. They are every bit as good as you think they are. They're every bit as deserving of your support. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Twenty-seven years ago on Tuesday, I enlisted in the United States Army. Right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Not, please. Hold on. Wait, before we go on. I was on, a colonel. I don't do anything. Can we just get, can, just for, for the sake of time, one massive applause for the United States military. Let's just hear it. <laughs> there we go! The bikers are on their feet! Holy mackerel, wow. look at you people. Look at that. All right. I can I can't tell you what it means to America's young men and, women, uh, men and women warriors to know that they're loved the way you guys love them. That's amazing. Uh, but, you know, I'm a public citizen. I'm here as a public citizen, not as a military person. And I was a public citizen when somebody named Andrew Breitbart reached out to me. Yeah, Andrew. Um, friend of all three of us. Great guy. Wonderful guy, and I remember I called him up with a tip. We had we'd been talking about 80s music and, and, and Mexican food on Facebook. You know the Facebook, it's like the Twitter, except with more cats. <laughs> and uh, I said, hey, I know you've got this conservative website. Breitbart lives, everybody. Breitbart lives. As long as there's people like you, Breitbart lives. Now, here's, here's the deal. I said, uh, Andrew, there's this uh, thing happening. They're opening the new Star Trek movie over in Kuwait for our troops. I thought that was a good story for your big Hollywood site because we want to reinforce positive behavior. He goes, great, Kurt, write it up. What, me? Oh, okay. So I wrote it up, sent it in. Suddenly, what, what, what are you going to write next? He sucked me in, people. He sucked me in. He's never let me go. And that's what we're talking about here, empowerment. What are we going to do? What is your personal action? What, how are you going to fulfill your personal commitment to this country? What are you going to do? You can be a comic. You can be on the road. Tony was basically, you know, waiting tables, shining shoes. Now he's a radio star because he got involved in the uh, conservative movement. Now, you don't have to be on radio. You don't have to be writing at town hall. You don't have to be doing any of those things. You can be talking to your neighbors. Getting on the Facebook. Do you know people at church? People at church who might have the idea that Benghazi is some kind of joke instead of a tragedy where America was disgraced and four of our great American uh, warriors and uh, uh, diplomatic personnel murdered? You can clear that up. Everyone is a warrior. Think about what you can do. I don't need to tell you what to do. You're Americans. You're entrepreneurs. You know your skills. You know your talents. Is anybody going to stop you? Are you going to let anyone tell you no? Let me ask something here, because sometimes we need an example, and the only people I have any influence are maybe our veterans. We got any veterans in here? We got any veterans? Okay. Remember that oath I mentioned taken 27 years ago next Tuesday? 
the one to defend our Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Hey, it didn't come with an expiration date. Your duty isn't done. Every single one of you, every single one of you has something to contribute to this fight. That's why you're here. You want to fight. Hey, nobody's going to tell you how to do it. We can't. We can only give you ideas. But you're Americans. You know what you can do. You know your talents. You know your skills. You know what you can do best. The message attracted and targeted today, get up, go out, and do it. That is all. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Schlichter. Yes, yes, yes. So, all right. Now so, now, so everyone can have a drink. A, yeah. Now's a good time to maybe refresh yourself. It would be a good time to Steven. bring me another drink. If um, anybody wants to bring Stephen another vodka drink. Vodka soda, please. Um, yes, yes. Uh, but he brings up a good point. I mean, and, and we all have our individual stories. I, I got into radio by taking quite literally the last $2,000 I had in the world. I had lost everything in the, in the crash, uh, 08 uh, and 2009. <laughs> And I bought time on a radio station in Tampa, Florida. That's how I got started. Hustled his way into this gig like no one I've ever seen hustle their way into radio. He did it out yeah. of his house on, a, on a, just on streaming for the longest. Hell, we were doing a thing for uh, Americans for Prosperity in Virginia a couple years ago. We're in a freaking cab on our way to the gig, but it was the time of day that his show was scheduled. We're doing it from his iPhone. That's it. This guy is the, he just hustled. That was it. Uh, nothing was magic. It. But, isn't, but that's, that's the American way. That's how else? It doesn't get... Here's another name for hustle. Privilege. I, 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 oddly enough, I, for those of you who, who may not be watching, I am white. <laughs> and I did not get an immediate entree in. Nobody's saying to you, oh my goodness, thank the dear Lord, Tony Katz is on the radio. Let's put him on 400 stations. you got to actually go out and earn it. No one told Stephen he could be a comic. He decided to do it. No one told uh, Kurt Schlichter that he could be a writer for Town Hall, that his new book, Conservative Insurgency, available at Amazon.com on pre-order. Uh, you need to go pre-order it. plug. By the way, Tony, thank you for your blurb. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Long story, but... <laughs> but Come it's, drink it's, with us later, we'll tell you. <laughs> this whole idea of empowerment, and let me, let me go to you guys. This whole idea of empowerment is not based on someone else telling you it's okay. That is a fundamental difference. And I think it takes sometimes people to realize that even if there are other people in that space, whatever that space is, whatever the thing that your interest is, for example, I'm not the guy you come to on foreign policy. Uh, I, I, I would go to someone like Kurt on that. I am not someone you go to on long-term history of activism. That's someone I would go to, to, to Stephen for. Um, but there's nobody who's going to tell you, yes, this is the right way to do it, or yes, you can or cannot do it. That's, that's a huge part of this. This well, whole, of who we are, actually. And that was one of the great things. That's how Breitbart got so many people inspired, the way he would... He would he, it wasn't just about giving people a platform to write because not everyone who got inspired by Andrew Breitbart ended up writing for him, but he inspired so many people because he would just say, it's okay, you just go be you, do what you can do, and that's how he got so many people involved in this movement, and it starts with small things. Hell, Tony and I met each other be, uh, on Twitter because we were organizing the first West L.A. Tea Party yes. in, in February of 2009, and so we Santa seen, Monica Pier. Santa Monica, we've cool. seen... Which is a... When you don't know how the tea party is going to work is the only place you can organize it because if they come for you, you can escape. Yeah, we jump in the water. Jump. But, the, but the thing is, is it's the, the greatest thing we've got to see since the beginning of the Tea Party movement is people from all walks of life, people from all over America, big cross-section, just getting involved and interested and fired up about politics because they're Americans and they have the right to, and they should. USA begins with you. And there is no me in vodka, but there's some vodka in me. <laughs> you can put that on your tombstone if you like. We can... No, it's okay. <laughs> you can do it that what you will. This but it's so fall. unbelievably true. The... So I, I, I do a lot of speaking across the country. I, I find myself incredibly fortunate in, in that regard. And there will people, there'll be people who come up to me. And I don't know if you guys get this or not. We have actually one of the few things we've never discussed. And if he's looking at his phone, he's I'm he's trying to tweeting. see how much time we are because I have to move us to the next thing. All right. But I'm going to finish this up. I'm going to do what we're actually told to do. I'm going to actually follow some rules, not all of them. Good gosh. Whatever, man. suck up. All right, there. <laughs> one more drink for Steven, please. Just make this easier. You know what? I forgot what I was going to say. Thank you very much. I'm the one with ADD. You should be able to do it. 
But it's true. We talk about, you know, I, I travel the country and I talk to people and they'll come up to me and say, hey, you know what you should talk about on your show? Do you know what the thing you should talk about? You know what you should interview? I shouldn't do anything except what I do. But you should start a show. Yep. You should start talking about that stuff. You should start writing about that stuff. Where's your podcast? The, the barriers to entry are almost non-existent now. If you, if you want to get involved in something like that and get a bigger voice, you can't. It's, it's easy to do. When I first started, I was a comic, but the people in politics <coughs> didn't know who I was. I wrote 18 hours a day during the 2008 election for free on my own WordPress site. And I just, just put, so I could get segue into writing somehow. So it's, it's there for everybody. It's imperative to remember. It's imperative to know there are no rules. There are no rules. There are no barriers to entry. You can do it. And if it's not uh, doing video, it's writing. If it's not writing, it's radio. If it's just writing out uh, something on a piece of paper, making 3,000 copies and putting them on windshields, do it to it. Stephen, continue. If you want to take over your local Republican Party, please, God, do so. Yes. Well. <laughs> that's, how, that's how we really need to do this. Hey, when there's no limits, when there's no barriers, there's no excuses. If we fail, if we let this country fall, if our Constitution burns, it isn't on the bad guys, it's on us for not fighting for it. <laughs> Look, um, he wasn't kidding. I don't know what to tell you. I'm Polish and Irish. Alcoholism is more of a career goal in my family than a disease. <laughs> I go to an AA meeting. I'm related to everyone. My name is Stephen. I'm an, we know who you are, Steve. It's Thanksgiving. Sit Hi, down. Stephen. Um, we're going to try this now. We thought about this. We thought it would be fun. It could be an unmitigated disaster, which would probably make it even better because we're looking for that negative cred, kind of. But what we're going to do now, this is called If We Were Your Three-Headed President. We're going to offer you some pithy policy solutions. Don't ask questions. Don't make a statement. Just, wait, just on my cue, yell out. Um, or should we have, do a raise of hands thing? I don't instead know, of I have a free no idea. for all, instead of, instead of everybody yelling out at once. Um, let's do it. Let's try raise of hands. We can segue to free for all. There aren't many. And then, you know, because I know, you know how the Presbyterians are going to get. Um, so just, just throw out something like immigration, something like a one word. or say, And it could be something from the news, too. It could be our take on the news. It doesn't have to be a policy fix, okay? So raise your hands. Let me know who wants to start. School lunches. I'm against it. <laughs> Three-headed prez. It's Twitter. I needed to save some characters. So wait, school lunches? There is no proof that f the, the food helps grades. <laughs> Feed them enough to make them full. Thank you. Here's an idea. Support your own damn family. I support mine. The school is not your babysitter. Learn how to cook, you lazy s Hey, not enough money for food? Maybe you could work harder. All right, next one, next up. No, we, we, we've already gone long. Yes. Common Core. I'm against it. Stalin loves it. I don't understand it. <laughs> Common core math problem. Take three commies, get your mother drunk, dance in a circle, and how many times do you have to say no? <laughs> Common core is the only thing where Obama econo Obamacare economically makes sense. Next up, someone in the middle. In the middle. Presbyterian, what? Guard my vote. Guard my vote? Oh, photo, oh, photo ID. ID. Photo ID. Why do the Democrats hate sinus sufferers? I have to show a photo ID to get Sudafed, but they don't have to. Why are they prejudiced against minority women sinus sufferers? They're misogynist, racist they bastards who want everybody to die from snot. <laughs> <laughs> They're allergists. What are we talking about, voter ID? It's not. Wait, no, yeah, voter ID. I had no idea where we were. It's you were all of a sudden inventing all the uh, ingredients for a meth lab. I had no idea what was happening. It's sinus privilege. That was well answered. Give us one more. 
I'm sorry. Yes, you, ma'am. Financial aid. I'm against it. Look, you probably don't need to be going to college to get a gender study degree. You, haven't, you, given, you haven't given your stock line yet. Uh, 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 I don't have, do I have a stock line? The Jews. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> uh, wait, no, 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 no. It was one thing. You, we're not, we're not, we're not, no, 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 no. I'm, no, 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 no. I learned this from Christopher Hitchens. No. No. Are we being, are we being oppressed and silenced at this point? Tony, I, I, I think you've I, crossed I've, the line. What was the, that? The hook is coming out. Oh, my goodness. What are you doing? <laughs> wow, that's a stern look. That must work really well on your kids. That's the, that's the dad look. How's that work? Are we done? More white are, are privilege finished? in action. I thought we still had time. I don't, I don't know if you are. Are you done? I have no idea. No, we do. Right. Right. You tell us. <laughs> no, we're like. Are we done? Now we have a riot here, yeah, but, sir. You, you know have a riot. We have uh, Ann Coulter standing in the wings, so. Okay, for Ann Coulter. I guess Coulter. you're done. This isn't the first time Ann has waited for me. Um, <sighs> well, now we know who's waiting in the wings. Uh, but we'll say this. We, we, we will not, unfortunately, get to the Q&A out of respect for the good Miss Coulter, who's going to be fantastic only because I wrote her, her speech today. Um, uh, she, she, she came out earlier, said hello. There were fist bumps all around. It was, it was lovely. Everybody openly wept. Um, uh, we hope you had a good time. When people ask you, because people, people, when people say what is tracked and targeted, just say yes, it is. It's this ill-defined thing that we're going to keep. We're, we're hitting the road. We're going to Houston with this in two weeks. Yes, um, with Koch Brothers money, by the way. Yes. Yeah! I checked all of my privilege and found it awesome. Kurt? Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you very much. This is my friend Kurt Schlichter. This is my friend Tony Katz. I'm Stephen Cruiser. God thank bless you. you. Thank you. God bless the United States of America.